Hi, so good morning, everybody. Um, again, my name is Rahil Khalid. I'm the C CTO and Chief Engineer at Environment by Verizon. Um, at Verizon, what we do in terms of AR and VR actually started about three years ago. So we were kind of built to go out there and figure out what the main problems were to get XR out there into the mainstream and what we could do from a network perspective to come and make it popular. So we went out and we built tools and, and um, infrastructure and pipeline, and we went to go out and solve a few problems. The first problem that we wanted to solve for was distribution. How do you get your applications out there quickly to your uh, clients and to your users in a way that they don't have to go out and download and install them? How can we make it so that you can go and flip through these experiences as quickly as possible? Uh, the next limitation that we wanted to address was expertise. It's actually pretty hard to go out there and make an XR experience, as many of you know. So we wanted to go out and build tools which make it very easy to go out and build XR experiences which can go wide to a number of platforms. Um, along those lines, we went out and we wanted to see how do you go and solve some of the problems on device? So right now, devices are getting smaller and smaller and thinner and thinner. And the biggest items that you have to contend with are the amount of uh, GPU memory on a device, uh, thermal dissipation and heat, uh, sorry, heat and um, the amount of latency and bandwidth you can actually get through to a device to, uh, to render your experiences. So before this was a, a problem, but three years ago we started building with this in mind. We wanted to go out and build a platform and infrastructure which helps you deliver these experiences and leverages the network so you can offload a lot of these experiences to uh, edge networks. And what we did is we went out and we built three things, self-service tools, a streaming SDK, and a massive infrastructure, which is built to uh, deliver all of these experiences very, very effectively. So the first tool that we built was uh, announced and made available to the public in April called AR Designer. It was a drag and drop tool which allowed you to go and create AR experiences without doing any programming, but it was built specifically with the intention of leveraging the network. Um, Later this year, we're going to be doing the same thing and releasing WorldMaker, a uh, first-of-its-kind tool where you can drag and drop to create experiences, again, with no programming, but you'll be able to create scenes and levels and worlds and stream them in an AR or a VR context. And that's really where a bulk of this goes, right? We want to talk about how do you deliver and solve for the big problems that are in AR and VR. And the way that we decided to do that is through streaming. So we went out and we built a streaming virtual machine and everything around it so you can go and deliver your experiences in fast, scalable ways. Um, and when we say streaming, we really mean streaming. All of our data is written in custom file formats, and it's chunked, transient, and adaptive. By chunked, I mean the data, including 3D objects, meshes, textures, um, logical bits, are broken into small pieces which can be consumed on demand ad hoc. They're transient. They go straight to your GPU. They don't require download and install, and then they get discarded, so they don't occupy space on your device. And then finally, they're adaptive. The entire infrastructure and the environment pipeline that we've created can scale based on the amount of GPU you have, your connection, bandwidth, and latency. But all of this really comes together when you talk about the edge network. So what is the mobile edge, and what is the edge network? Well. If you're in the telco space, you kind of have been hearing a little bit about this, but to the general public, it's still kind of ambiguous. But we call the edge network uh, what, you, what happens when you take the cloud and you move it into the network itself, make it only a few hops away. So previously, if you wanted to go out to your, cl your cluster in AWS, you might have between 80 and 200 milliseconds of latency. But with the edge network, we're going and we're taking this technology and we're putting it right on the network itself. So we're promising up to single millisecond latencies round trip. So what this actually means for AR and VR is all of a sudden where you had uh, infrastructure and pipelines and everything designed to work on device and you're limited by the hardware that's embedded, you can now go one or two or three hops away into the network itself, do all of your heavy compute and stream it back to your device. So I wanted to actually show a lot of new things today and I wanted to make a lot of announcements. So I want to start by announcing uh, the Intelligent Edge, which is now being powered with environment technology. So for the first time, AR and VR edge computing APIs that we're going to make publicly available. Um, and I want to show you things that are real, not just futurist talk. I want to show you things that are actually working and show you breakthroughs and jumps in technology which are available now. 
And again, this is not what we consider viewport render. We're not just taking your workload or virtualizing it and putting it in the network. We're talking about brand new use cases. These are things that are not um, your virtual session with a video stream coming down and inputs going up. This is actual split workloads. So four new APIs that we're calling environment edge solutions. And this is here to break what is possible today on AR and VR. So I'm going to talk about four brand new APIs, uh, real-time computer vision, XR rendering and lighting, spatial rendering for immersive audio, and hybrid rendering for graphics. All this is going to be available uh, starting Monday in partner access mode. So the first one I want to talk about is hybrid rendering. So this is where we go and we take your rendering stack for your graphics or for your games, and we take all of the hard uh, graphical computations, and we push it up a few levels into the edge network, and then we stream it back to you blazingly fast. So things like lighting, shadows, PBR, subsurface scattering, rendering things, tasks which are unheard of on mobile devices, we're just going to take them up one level and bring you back to computational results. So um, talk is cheap. I'm going to show you what this actually looks like for real. That was Project Helios. It's the world's first split rendering demo, which is live. And it's de defined as a benchmark that anybody can go and pick up. Um, Project Helios was designed to be the impossible game. It's something which you cannot run on a mobile headset. Typically, if you're building a VR experience on a headset, you get a few lighting passes. Maybe you'll get a, a maximum of five. Maybe you'll get uh, two light sources in there. Project Helios had 88 light sources. Everything inside of the environment was physically based rendering. So you had reflections, shadows, um, HDR probes, the hardest things that you can possibly do. It was a straight shot trench run, meaning something you don't do in a game is you put all of your assets in a straight shot so you can see everything, have lights bouncing everywhere, and then move through it at 1,000 feet per second and try to uh, shoot enemies. That is a graphical overload. If you ran this, on a device without uh, edge compute, it would run it between one and three frames per second. Using edge compute and 5G, we're running this on a mobile headset at 75 hertz. So that's breakthrough technology for rendering. And it's a brand new stack where we're actually not just streaming a frame, we're streaming actual computations and doing the final raster on device. What that means is the device itself is still in control of your render loop and it always maintains lag-free. If the network stutters, or you have congestion, or your cat falls asleep on your router, you're not going to have a bad time inside of VR. And that's really what this is all about, making sure that you have a graphical boost and an enhancement, and enabling brand new use cases without limiting what's possible when the network's not there. Um, the second thing I want to show is environment rendering and lighting for AR and for XR. So in this use case, what we have is a dark room with a single lamp. And what we're doing here is we're solving for shadows. We take frames from the camera, we push them up to our uh, edge server, we calculate the light maps, 
the reflections, everything else, and we send you back to the calculations. So here you can see a fireplace, and in a second you're gonna see a robot dropped in, but the lighting and shadow maps that you see projected onto this have been computed and calculated from the edge, and they're able to respond at 75 hertz. That's a, an amazing breakthrough in the way that lighting is done. It gets you brand new types of realism. You can see our service bartender here. The lighting from that lamp is reflecting properly on him and all of his lapels. It's not faked, it's actual animation that's going through, and it's live today. The next thing I wanted to show is real-time computer vision, and this one is huge, right? So with real-time edge computer vision, what we're doing is we're taking all of that incredibly difficult to process training data for, and machine learning and pushing that up to the edge network. So like our other use cases, you're constrained by VRAM. That, the amount of video memory that you have on a device limits how many things you can search against with computer vision. In this case, we are guaranteeing under 100 millisecond round trip time to go and get your training data, get your identifiers and poses back. And by doing that, you can open it up in the amount of computer vision that you can process is limited only by the training data that you're able to upload to our, to our edge server. The more you have, the quicker it goes. And as you can see here, in real time, it's blazingly fast. 100 milliseconds, we've identified every magazine, brought back all of the points, augmented them, and you're good to go to render. We can even combine this with our rendering APIs and make, that, make the render happen and assisted by what's happening in the edge. So we've combined all of the APIs together. This enables brand new types of computer vision and brand new types of scenarios, which are only really possible with tons and tons of GPU power. This is not something you can do on an embedded piece of glass that you're wearing on your head or on a mobile phone. But we're enabling brand new leagues of computer vision where you can walk down the street and identify everything incredibly quickly. Finally, spatial audio. So this is the thing that's most overlooked in the uh, computing field, inside of XR especially. We had a big hype a few years back about spatial audio and ambisonics, but it was hard to do, and people didn't have labs set up to, to build the audio experiences, and it required tons of DSP power to actually calculate audio. So what we did is we went out and we created spatial audio in the highest degree up on the edge. So now all you have to do is send your emitters, your audio streams, and then set up your environmental factors. How's your room look, um, occluders, and send up your head rotations. We'll mux the audio for you and send you back a binaural stream. So it's, it's literally zero effort on your part. Now include high order ambisonics on your device. So four brand new use cases and four brand new APIs that are available today running off the edge, um, available to all of our partners who are looking to use this. We're looking to onboard as many platforms as possible. So if you think your platform or your app can use something like this, absolutely come check us out at the environment booth or drop us a line. So. I hope I kind of enlightened you to brand new possibilities of what's possible, and I hope this really brings your apps to the cutting edge. Thanks.